Hello! In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about organizing your grasshopper definitions and some of the most popular methods to do so. To start, we have to create a small definition to work with. So let's go to vector point, construct point, click drag and drop. We're going to be just constructing a point. Let's go to params, input, number slider, click drag and drop. So we have a slider now. And let's connect this slider to X input. And as you can see, we can manipulate the, co the X coordinate of the point. Let's double click on the slider, on the name of the slider. Let's change uh, the settings of it. So we want, it, uh, we want the numbers to be integer ones. We want minimum to be minus 10 and the maximum to be 10. Let's click OK. Yes, that's, that's what I want. <clears throat> you notice that as soon as I connected my slider, so you see that when, when number slider is not connected, you just have a name slider on your left, on the left. And as soon as I connect it with the input X, it now changes and it, it spec specifies. Um, in this case, it's really specified. Sometimes it just gives a hint. Um, the, the, the name, the title of the slider changes. So this is already part of the organizing, your part of the organization of your definition. So it gives you um, better readability. Let's double click on that. And let's just change the name into x because i consider x coordinate was a bit too long for me okay that's perfect let's now select the slider click click and hold alt and then just create a couple of copies and then just connect those copies to y and z coordinate uh, inputs okay great as you can see now since i have changed the name of my slider into a custom name When I uh, created a copy and connected it, it doesn't change automatically anymore. So since I modified it, now I would need to actually, I, I right click on it and I would need to Y, first Y, and then Z. Okay, so now all matches. Another thing what I would like to do, I would just go again inside. Let's see if we can change values here. Let's right click on the slider, go to values, and then let's change the minimum value of Z coordinate to zero and choose commit changes. So now we only have this range. Let's talk about the feature that I have mentioned before when we were talking about uh, canvas toolbars, it is, uh, it's called align. If we select multiple nodes, multiple these um, parameters, you can see this uh, I guess a dialog opens where you can align. Let's make it more dramatic. If I select them all, and I can choose to align them. Align them, let's say, to the left or to the right, that I usually choose left. And then we can also align them um, vertically. So there's the distance between them is equal. Okay, if you don't have that um, type of transparent dialog open up, you have to go to display, to the main menu bar display canvas widgets and turn on align. So the icon, if the icon is turned on, it has this blue um, background. So if it's not turned on, I'm not able to align them. So make sure you use that widget. So now when we aligned it, I want to group them. I select them all. There's a few ways of grouping. You can use radial menu is the middle mouse click or the wheel click and you can choose to group
select them all, go to edit, and then choose group again here. And you can also just uh, right click and uh, choose group. So this is something accessible very easy, easily uh, because it's very um, convenient and it's, it's commonly used. You can see the group is represented as a, um, a certain color background containing your, your nodes that, that, been, that has been grouped. You can change the, out, the outline that's representing your group. I usually stick with the box outline. You can ungroup. You can add another component to the group or remove a certain carton component from the group. So let's say I want to remove this one. Select the component and choose remove from the group. And then you're removing it. And if I want to add again, I go on the group and set add to the group. And let's say I just select them and just align them again. Let's right click again on the group area representing the group. We can change color if we like. This is useful if you have some sort of color code that, that you're actually representing, uh, that each color represents something. Uh, let's say I have red for all the numerical slides. So we can manipulate the color and also the opacity of it. And I usually just make it red and so on. If you want, you can make the certain color a default color. So that next time when you group it, it's, uh, it's always red. But for me personally, I prefer something lighter, something like this. Make the focus. So I have this. Another useful feature for groups is naming them. If you right click on the group, here you can create a title for it. We will say number sliders and just click some. So you already have your naming on your group of components. Just going to quickly shout out to this uh, Bifocal plugin. Uh, I, I think I'm going to leave a link in the video description below so that you would, uh, would be able to download it and use it as well. So this one, if I deactivate it, double click to deactivate or activate, you can see that it just solves the problem of uh, having an icon or a name uh, for your components. So especially when teaching, this is very useful, uh, but probably for you it could be too. The last part considering grouping that I want to talk about is um, groups within groups. That's also sometimes useful. So let's say I have number slider as a group, but then I also want to have this whole piece as a group. So I do this and I create group within the group. And this one, uh, it's, it's, it's okay now, it, it, it worked. But let's say that um, sometimes the arrangement is, is that one group is on top of the, uh, another one. And uh, maybe with the transparency, uh, we could change the color of this one. Let's make it yellow. And then let's change the color of this one to red. And also opacity. So this is how it looks now. But if you go to edit, arrange, you can arrange where you want your group to be. So this, when you have larger group and then the smaller on top of it makes sense. Sometimes it's, it's like that. So if it's like that, you need to know how to solve it. So you have to select this group, the larger one, go to edit, arrange, and let's say put to back. Okay. I think this is it uh, with the uh, grouping, with creating groups. And let's get to the next one.